We're just walking around in some kind of fog. I think we're all on a trip. People are talking in symbols. Everyone's sort of floating through this fog of symbols and unconscious feelings. Welcome back to the Lucid Dreaming Podcast. This is episode 7, and let's get started with a few interesting little updates. My nice little podcast is getting some upgrades, and uh, hopefully you can hear it, but I got a new microphone, and it's looking pretty cool, and hopefully it sounds good as well. It's the Yeti, the Blue Yeti mic, Um, so... I'm hoping that this will give your ears a little cleaner and nicer sound um, and improve the just the quality of the audio obviously it's a such an auditory uh, format so hopefully this this helps a little bit the other thing very cool thing is that I got accepted to the SoundCloud podcasting beta program Uh, so first of all thanks a lot to the guys at SoundCloud um, if you've been listening on the on my website, you've been seeing their embed codes, uh, their little embedded player, which is kind of nice. And um, in terms of the feed, nothing really will change. If you've subscribed using the website feed, that will stay the same. If you subscribed through iTunes, um, that will nothing will change. But you can now also subscribe on SoundCloud. And in the next week or so, I'm probably going to switch the feed to iTunes. Instead of feeding from my website, it's going to feed from uh, from SoundCloud because they have, you know, better servers and better engines than I do. So, um, you know, a faster download speed if you're downloading an episode before you're hearing it, um, more reliable streaming and so on and so forth. So, um, and again, you, you don't have to do anything but I thought I'd, I'd share the new version if there's any issues if something suddenly doesn't work or looks funny just uh, let me know maybe that's why I'm telling you so you can keep an eye out if there's any any f- funky thing going on uh, but hopefully it will all be a smooth transition I, I don't think there should be any problem so um, I got a new book to read and uh, I mentioned uh, Charlie Morley um, on a couple episodes ago. And his book, Dreams of Awakening, has finally arrived. And I started reading. It is absolutely captivating. And I do wonder about a few things. First of all, almost right at the beginning, he you know, he writes about um, uh, lucidity, what he calls lucidity spectrum, which is basically what I just happened to talk about um, on the last episode about levels of lucidity and it's kind of cool so he breaks it down a little differently Uh, he breaks it down to about four sort of main um levels or stages but but points out just like i said that it's a it's really a spectrum that's why i like the name uh lucidity spectrum um but it's it's really cool I, i won't go into it i won't sit here and read you the book but I do highly recommend it. Um, I will let you know what I think once I actually finish it. So I'm a few chapters in, and it's excellent. But this brings this brings me to something that I do wonder, and I, I would love your feedback on, which is how many of you associate uh, associate lucid dreaming with uh, spirituality? Because it's uh, the uh, the origins of lucid dreaming, or well, at least the, the practice of lucid dreaming, uh, as as far as history goes back. Um, is is very well integrated in Tibetan Buddhism, as I uh, pointed out before. And Charlie Morley, of course, um, as not only a Buddhist, but somebody who studied, um, you know, Buddhism and meditation and teaches from that perspective, uh, as well as from sort of a Western perspective, which is really cool. But I do wonder how many people are saying, you know, as soon as they hear you know, something about spirituality or enlightenment or, you know, all that kind of stuff, does it 
you know, deter you? Does does it throw you off or does it sound absolutely natural and perfect fit for lucid dreaming and it makes makes perfect sense? You see, I've been meditating for about six years and I'm very exposed to all that. Of course, I'm my mind is scientifically oriented at the same time and I'm a sort of skeptic, but hopefully an open-minded skeptic if, you know, there is such a, such a fun hybrid, but I do wonder how other people see it because on one hand, there's the approach to lucid dreaming, which was very technical and clinical, but the experience itself is so esoteric. It's so, you know, unreal and super real in, in some weird sense at the same time because it's this crazy virtual reality experience in your mind. Um, so in, in a sense, it's so detached from reality. How can you not, you know, think about what it all means um, in a more, you know, philosophical or spiritual way? And of course, the more you get into it, the more you see that there's something is, you know, something to be revealed in, in, in the whole practice of lucid dreaming. But again, uh, everybody's experience is different. Um, so I don't know. I, I do I do wonder what people's views are on that. So just heads up, obviously, this book, if you do pick it up, and I do recommend you pick it up, um, is, is wonderfully laced with both Eastern, you know, Tibetan Buddhism perspective, as well as a Western one. I mean, it's, it's beautifully done. That's what I kind of like about it. Obviously, it, it speaks to me plenty, but um, I think he balances those very nicely, but, you know, dives right into, you know, high spiritual concepts as well. So I wonder how other people view, view that. And if you've read the book, uh, by all means, let, let me know. I'm curious because I think it's, it's one of the, the better books I've, I've read lately. So I'm, I'm, I'm deep into it and, uh, uh, it's hard to put down. So, um, We'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll tell you how when when I progress a little more. So, and the the last thing I wanted to say about the um, spectrum, uh, lucidity spectrum, it's that it's another one of those component um, that interests me. In I have this thing that I'm trying to sort of put together, and I'm trying to put together it in my mind, but then one day to actually put it on on paper it somehow, and it's. It's hard to explain, uh, but it's sort of trying to map lucid dreaming as a as a whole endeavor, as a whole. Again, it, it's kind of hard to do it, like have a theory of lucid dreaming, so to speak, um, in in some form of I don't know philosophical, but but semi scientific, at least semi scientific way, where you try to map the landscape of lucid dreaming. And again, it's so hard to explain. But you can take, you know, the spectrum of lucidity or levels of lucidity, as I called it, uh, as a component of that. That's a great example. Um, it's a phenomena within lucid dreaming uh, that you can sort of try to describe and categorize. And it's part of it. And the more components you describe in more detail, the more experience we have and be able to describe it. And hopefully with, you know, scientific measurements, we'll be able to do more with brain and EEG data um, to hopefully one day really really map lucid dreaming because I think we're all still, you know, early stage explorers. And maybe, maybe you know, some Buddhist monks have really mapped it out and we're, we're a little clueless to, to what they know. But <laughs> um, I think it would be interesting. I had this sort of conversation on Twitter with uh, Jamie Alexander, who I'm about to mention in this podcast in relation to something else. Um, he writes at lucidability.com uh, and we have a little, we had a little conversation about, you know, this, this mapping of lucid dreaming. And that's something I'm trying to sort of formalize in my head and make sense of it in some way. And then try to actually do this mapping, build, build a, a theory of lucid dreaming that, you know, addresses all of these various components. And it's, it's sort of out there in pieces from different people and different writings and different books. Um, but I want to I wanna try to create a comprehensive theory from it. And we'll see how that goes. That, that might take a while. Uh, anything from, you know, experiences in lucid dreaming to um, exactly what happens in the brain during lucid dreaming to uh, the chemistry and how supplements affect lucid dreaming. It's another thing I'm, I'm looking into. 
uh, that will take a little more time and more research. But I think you, you're sort of perhaps hopefully getting the sense to what, what I'm referring to. Um, so let's move along and, and talk about uh, today's subject, which is DIY methods, or sort of do-it-yourself techniques. And this is very interesting because I think I mentioned this uh, in a previous episode that there's, you know, there's, there's, there's sort of the core methods and the core techniques that we all know, the, you know, the, the basic ones that were sort of set in place by Stephen LeBurge and all that period of time. And, and then I mentioned that, you know, people come up with new ones every day and they keep adding all these acronyms dialed and wild and mild and filed and, you know, it's just, it's getting even ridiculous. So on one hand, it's sort of, it's a mess because just there, there's so many and some of them are really similar and some of them are just variations on the same thing. Some of them are really subcategories of others, as I mentioned. Um, but I think the I think the important thing about the fact that people are still sort of trying to come up with new techniques is, as I said, we're all still explorers. There isn't a definitive, this is how you lose a dream. And, I, and I'm sure if you talk to enough people, you kind of get the sense that there, there's a, there's a different method for every person, meaning there's, you know, different techniques works better, work better or worse for different people. It's not a sort of set, pre predefined kind of thing. It's not this is the best technique or has been shown uh, to work the best for most people. At least, I don't know if anybody has uh, done done any surveys or research into what works more for people, what works less. Maybe maybe there, there are work, ones that work better than others in general. But I'm, I'm sure we'll always find that um, there are you know, individuals who specific techniques just for whatever reason, which we don't know yet, work better than others. And that brings me to the DIY methods, because I think that we haven't really discovered all of the ways to, to do it. And I think that people are just experimenting. People get to a point where they either give up on trying techniques that they've read about, or with a lot of experience, they start just playing around and testing and refining the techniques that they know, just because they sort of get a sense for it, or they just try it, or something happens accidentally, and they say, oh, well, let me let me look into this. So I wanted to give a couple examples today, and then sort of open up the question of, you know, if you, if you didn't know about any techniques, what would you try? And if you do know about techniques, but you know, you, if you suddenly realize or come to the conclusion that maybe you can try something that you haven't tried before, that nobody really specified, but you get a sense that maybe if you try it, it might work, um, what would you try? What would you do? And what, if you had to develop your own technique, um, what would that be? So the first example, and I, I mentioned that before, um, so uh, Jamie, Jamie Alexander uh, from Lucid Ability uh, wrote a book called Lucid Dream on Command, Advanced Techniques for Multiple Lucid Dreams per Week. Now, it's a, it's a really good book. It's, it's sort of relatively short and sweet. Um, but my, what I got from it um, is, and again, this is, this is a sort of, maybe a slightly farther variation of an existing technique, but this, it seems like from, from what I understand from the book, that this is something that he sort of developed uh, intuitively, which is kind of cool. And it's a sort of three part technique. And the reason I think it's, he calls it advanced technique. It's more, you know, one technique than multiple techniques, but it has different stages. The reason he calls it advanced, not because it's, you know, complicated, but I think um, from what I gather, it sort of takes some time to, to train yourself to do, to do it that way specifically. And um, the implication is that 
if you do train yourself or if you do give it a, a try over a period of time and if you get the hang of it, then it's something that you can do regularly and successfully. Um, so I'm, I'm starting now to uh, try and implement this technique and I'll, I'll keep you posted on how it goes. But, you know, I'll, I'll link to the, to the book. It's, it's $2.99 on Kindle. I mean, it, for that price, it's, it's really a no-brainer. Um, so if you want to look into it, by all means, do it. I, I, can't, I can't even describe his technique because it's, that's why he wrote it down. That's why it's a, it's a whole little book, but it's a short book. But, but still, he goes through it and the whole process and how it works and, and so on. And um, I, I won't do it justice by, by any means. So go check it out and take a look. And that's, that's one I wanted to mention because it's, it's someone who went and through his own practice sort of came up with a technique. The other one I wanted to mention that I, I came across on, on Reddit, of course, um, by um, someone named Hari Yonago. That's his Reddit username. Um, and it's a very cool technique, and, and this, this touches nicely upon the whole the whole um the whole point of uh of people coming up with more acronyms that sort of fit the mold the existing mold the something ild but it kind of works it kind of fits um so i thought i thought it was funny i i, I chuckled when i read it but um the basic core of the technique i'm going to run through it but again i'm going to link to the original post on reddit because just trying to explain it, I, I might not do, do it justice, and I don't want to sit here and read the entire, the entire thing. But it's basically, you know, before you uh, go to sleep, or, or at any point, you create a audible rhythm, like clapping your hands or tapping to a beat or something, something very consistent and repetitive. Same, same beat, same speed. And you think about it. You memorize the uh, sensation, let's say, if you're clapping your hands, uh, memorize the sound, memorize the rhythm, the, the speed, the beat, and, and then you go to sleep and you wake up a few hours before you're supposed to get up. You don't get out of bed. It's not the wake back to bed thing where you go up in, for an hour and do stuff. It's, you sort of go, go back asleep right away, but as you're falling asleep and as that moment that you're sort of dozing off, you start imagining yourself creating that same rhythm, that same beat. So you imagine yourself clapping your hands um, as much as you can, as vividly as you can, and you repeat that, and you try to sort of do it um, while still falling back asleep. So, so kind of do it in the, in the back of your mind. And he says that if you're successful, um, one of two things might happen. So you'll either find yourself in your bed physically clapping your hands, which means that you're actually dreaming and you created a sort of false awakening, which false awakenings is another awesome topic I'll touch upon when I finish because it's kind of cool. Um, and then that means that you're, you know, if you're, if you're clapping in your bed, do a reality test because you're probably lucid dreaming and not actually clapping. Um, if you find yourself in a dream, you'll probably find yourself in a dream clapping. Congratulations. <laughs> you went right into the dream, uh, and hopefully you become lucid. Um, so that's kind of cool. And he called it, I think it was something like uh, rhythm-induced lucid dream, so riled. So <laughs> once again, people come up with with new techniques every day. And, and again, there are always components of other techniques in them. And I think this, this is um, similar to the sort of auto-suggestion, uh, mantra-based falling asleep with a something in your, in your mind, repeating in your mind. And I think, it's, I think it's basing on that. But I think that what's cool, and I'm gonna try this technique as well, is, you know, it uses a not just a, a word or a sentence that you say in your head over and over again, but um, an imagined action that your body is doing. So if you fall back and fall back right into REM sleep, into a dream, hopefully you do that particular action and that will trigger lucidity. So it's fascinating. It's a, it's a very cool technique. So props to 
Harionago. <laughs> and I'll, I'll link to that. There's a really nice discussion uh, below his post, of course. One of the nice little benefits of of Reddit, uh, our lucid dreaming subreddit. So as you can see, you know, people are after a while trying it themselves, coming up with new ways, trying, testing things. He says this is very, very successful for him. And this is what I want you to try to do if you've been trying for a long time and it's not really working or you've been uh, doing this for a long time and you have different variety of different things working. Stop and think and, and try to sort of formulate something for yourself that you haven't tried before. Try um, coming up or figuring out. Um, hmm, it's hard to explain. Try sensing what might work for you. And I think it has to do a lot with, you know, what's your pattern of sleep and what's your pattern of falling asleep. So techniques and methods that rely of that hypnagogic state that when you fall, as you fall asleep, trying to stay aware during that, that phase is, is very hard for some people, but comes a little more naturally to others. And that's obviously the, the ability to do that, which is increased as, as mentioned uh, in the past by, by things like awareness training and meditation. Um, I believe the, again, the EEG devices uh, will help training that as well. Um, so this is a very powerful and useful method to stay aware right into the dream, especially if you just woke up from REM. But some people, it doesn't work for them, and some people really need a dif different method and increasing their ability to do reality checks when things are weird and when they are in, in dreams and not just sort of transitioning into the dream. So more of the dream-induced lucid dreaming techniques. But try, try something new. Try to think outside of your own box and see what you can come up with. And you never know. That's the kind, that's a cool thing about, you know, being sort of on the uh, exploring side of lucid dreaming is that you never know if you actually might come up with a technique that will benefit so many other people if you end up sharing it. You know, we, we practice the various techniques that we learn, but like m in many other things in life, you know, we learn how to do things something, anything. And then after a while, we sort of create our own version of it or develop a completely new version of doing things, whether it's, you know, writing code for software or drawing something, you know, building something or, or any kind of thing. Um, you know, we, we find what works for us more and people come up with new methods and share them and they change industries sometimes. So you never know. You might actually contribute to uh, the realm of lucid dreaming and to the awakening of many, many people. I think that would be cool. So give give that a try and let me know what you come up with. And if you have created your own little method and your own little technique, share it. Share it on Dream DreamViews uh, forums or on Reddit, subreddit, or again, you can contact me always and uh, that that would be awesome. We'll all benefit from it. So that's sort of the, the short little spiel on um, DIY methods. And as I find more, I will continue to, sh to share more. I think these are these are great because it's new 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 things to test out and new things to try. And you know for some for some people, lucid dreaming is much easier for some, it's much harder. And, you know, the more tools that we have to, to give it a try and to, to find a way to do it on a more regular basis, the better. That's awesome. So let me, uh, I mentioned false awakening, and I thought it'd be uh, a cool thing to, to mention. As far as I know, not, not everybody had that experience, of course, but it is one of the more bizarre things. And if you haven't experienced it, it's simple. You're in a dream. And it can be a regular dream or a lucid dream, but you wake up from that dream and you wake up in your bed and then you proceed to go out of, get out of bed and start doing things, thinking that you've just woken up 
only to at some point suddenly wake up again in your bed, grabbing your head saying, holy camoly, you, you basically had a false awakening and you thought you, you thought you woke up and you thought that now you are in real life and uh, waking life, real life, so to speak. Um, but no, you were still dreaming, but you were dreaming that you were waking up. And that is such a strange experience. It's, it's so jarring because, you know, not only that a regular dream fools you to thinking that it's reality until you wake up, but then you get, you know, fooled again. Um, it's, <laughs> it's so bizarre. Now, it happens a lot in practice of lucid dreaming and happens a lot um, after a lucid dream because this, there is this conscious awareness and the expectation to wake up and the thought about like, I'm going to wake up soon, where regular dreams don't have that as much. So sometimes you're thinking you're about to wake up and then you have the experience of waking up and you say, and, and it doesn't feel strange, you're expecting it. So, you know, that's, that's what's happening. But what actually happens is that you sort of switch modes. Who knows what, what the actual occurrence in your brain is, but something makes you, you know, you, you're, you suddenly dream that you are waking up, but it's just another dream. It's just another dream state, another dream phase. And the transition is so, so sharp that you, you don't think twice about it. You get up, you start walking, start doing your day and suddenly wake up again. And you're like, oh, am I dreaming now? I've never had, so that's sort of a dream within a dream, which is kind of cool and the whole inception thing, but I've never had two false awakenings in a row. I wonder if that actually happens. That would be really messing with your brain because at some point you really start doubting whether you're, you're awake this time, which is good because the more you question whether you're awake or dreaming, the more chances you get to wake up and become lucid in your next dream. So it's not such a bad thing. And it's a cool, weird experience anyway. So if that happens to you, <laughs> be prepared. If it hasn't happened to you, I'm sure it will at some point. It's, um, it's, it's quite the phenomenon. So um, I want to finish uh, today's episode with uh, a couple of mentions, a couple of uh, thank yous to... Um, first of all, thank you for everybody who's listening. Uh, I think... The podcast is growing and uh, I want to put more effort into it. And I think that I think that once that I get to the 10th episode, I want to, my plan is hopefully to start recording on a regular basis. That's why I got a better mic. I'm trying to allocate a time once a week to doing the recording and then I can, you know, edit and clean the audio a little bit and then post hopefully once a week on a more consistent basis. I'm sorry, I've been lagging here and there, but I've you know, this is an experiment, as I've said on the first episode. Hopefully, I'm going to get um, into a rhythm and a regular schedule to be able to post, record and post once a week. That would be awesome. I really want to do that. And hopefully, you know, I'll have more, more guests or more people to talk to and more, you know, I have plenty of subjects I want to mention and things I want to talk about. And I'm trying to sort of, for now, keep episodes a little short, but when I get better practice and get the hang of it uh, a little bit more, um, I will start diving deeper into some of these subjects. And there's a lot, again, there's, there's so many, uh, so many things I want to mention, but I do want to also um, research things properly. So I can, you know, speak from knowledge about some of these subjects that, that do require more research, like supplements and uh, EEG and all that other things. Um, so I wanted to to say a couple of mentions. I wanted to thank Cycle 2049. It's the name that appears. I don't know if that's them for um, a, a really nice, wonderful, and short uh, review on iTunes. That's kind of, that's very sweet. And I, I really enjoyed uh, seeing that. And if, if you do like the podcast and if you're listening and, and subscribing through iTunes, by all means, um, you know, go and give it a nice little five-star rating and let me know what you think. If you do have feedback about the show um, or about the subjects or anything that I've mentioned, you can always email me. Uh, the email uh, is contact at lucidsage.com without the, without the the, but on Twitter, it's the lucidsage. 
Um, and another thank you to Ryan, um, who wrote in with a with a, a wonderful email and delightful things. It's such a such a pleasure to to read some of these emails. So thank you, Ryan, for for writing in with with the info you sent me. Um, it's much appreciated. So hopefully you enjoy this podcast and this episode. And until next time, sweet and lucid dreams. <laughs>